Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Uh, taking a quick break in my day. Uh, making a quick run and decided that I want to talk to you about a sort of hot topic. I'm not going to be long um, because I, I want to make the point and I want to kind of leave it uh, acutely impressed upon you. Uh, before I do so, I want to, as always, remind you that we are in need of your support. So if you believe in the work we do at the Odyssey Project, if you followed me, you know what that is. I'm not going into it right now, but we've been doing this for years. Uh, I didn't just pop up on the scene. I've been doing this for years, and I've been consistent in my message, consistent in my service, consistent in the work that I've done. And we need your support. On that note, I'm going to move into what I want to talk to you about. Uh, everybody is now talking about this sick uh, video that's moving around with the Dalai Lama uh, basically trying to get a young boy to suck on his tongue. Uh, and obviously, it's sickening. Uh, Obviously, there's no freaking explanation for it. Uh, there's no justification for it. There's no way around it. What you are experiencing is something that I've been trying to tell you guys about for a while. You're, what you're witnessing is the comfortability that comes with the normalization of unacceptable behavior. When it's done enough, when there are situations in which it is being pushed and the public is being desensitized to it and it becomes more and more acceptable to do in certain environments, you get caught up in where you're at and what's going on and your urges uh, kick in. I think uh, it's a, with, with the Dalai Lama, I think it's a combination of age. I think it's a combination of age a combination of the fact that maybe he was uh, lost in the moment and didn't realize or think about the fact that he was being recorded. Uh, but it also points to the fact that this is probably something so common that his antenna wasn't even up to be aware or concerned with what was going on around him. Now, everybody's caught up in the fact that it's the Dalai Lama that did it as if we haven't been hearing about priests molesting boys for freaking decades. Okay, so the idea that someone just because they are granted some uh, moniker for spirituality all of a sudden says they're no longer human, says they're no longer fallible, says they're no longer capable of doing tremendous harm is why we are in so much of a pickle right now. It's because we trust people solely based off of who they are. And I've been talking about this. Our children have been in danger for decades and we don't see it. And I'm talking about the last 30 years specifically, there's been an ongoing push to normalize pedophilic and aphibophilic behavior. And there is a difference between a pedophile and an aphibophile. An a, a pedophile is a person who has a sexual attraction to prepubescent children. So children who haven't even started going into puberty yet. They are by all stretches babies. Aphibophiles are people who are sexually attracted to post-pubescent adolescents, meaning that they have started to develop sexually. For girls, they probably have breasts and have started to develop a figure. For boys, they're more muscular and appealing, but they are still minors. Both are sick, but they are two different, and you have to understand that to understand the sickness. Uh, both are sick. Again, let me stress that. Both are sick, but you got to understand, think about it. A lot of us grew up in an environment that we don't want to talk about because we like to keep that elephant in the room uh, pushed up in the corner and pretend that it's not sitting there. We want to act like we didn't grow up in an environment where them old nasty ass dudes around the hood were sitting up saying if she could bleed, she can breathe. 
Like we don't hear some of these people running around talking about she gonna be fine when she growing up. What the fuck are you looking at her in a way that can tell you or make you project what she's gonna be when she becomes mature? She's a baby now. She's a baby. Don't. There's no need to look at her and see nothing but that baby. But we're gonna pretend that doesn't happen. But, 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 but what we need to also be aware of is the intensification of this type of thinking, the normalization of it. And the and here how here how here is how it's come to us. It's come to us uh, through the LGBTQ community, and I'm not saying that that community is com uh, complacent or uh, what's the word I'm looking for. Uh, I, it'll come to me, but I'm not saying that as a as a community. That's the I'm saying because I've heard a lot of people in the community say that they're not uh, co-signing it, they're not having it. But there's a part of the community that is complicit. The word I was going to use, complicit to it, and what they're doing is they're promoting. You got to think if you if you've ever seen the photos and the videos of a gay parade. That's some pretty crazy out wild going on now. If that's a that if that's an all a dud affair, trust me, you know there's a document now coming out about Freaknik, right? And everybody's going like, oh my god, and everything like. I'm like, good, I ain't never go to Freaknik, but they better not come out with one of those Capital Beach Party uh, documentaries because I'm gonna have my attorney send them immediately uh, a, 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 a statement saying that you do not have my express consent to use my likeness or anything thereof. But so, but you're talking about adults and adults. When you look at a gay pride parade, you got kids running around there. You got people running around with their little stuff hanging out and doing all kind of stuff. And what they're doing is they're normalizing sexualized ideas. The nude body is sexualized, especially in the Western culture. This was a situation where we're in certain parts of Africa uh, where women have their breasts out and you know, it's not that, un then, okay, we'll say, okay, it's not a set, but here, it's definitely sexualized. Any part of a person's private area is seen. It is automatically sexualized. That's how depraved this particular Western culture is. So, in essence, let's look at it. Okay, you got that, so you got that part. Then you got them pushing for the right for young children who haven't even reached puberty yet to determine their sexual identity. So just by the very nature of saying I'm determining my sexual identity, you're also saying that um, I'm aware of my sexuality. And so again, here we are normalizing sexual imagination, so to speak, with young kids. And it's becoming normalized. And then there's uh, it's all in the cartoons. It's all in the games. It's everywhere. <clears throat> and it's sitting there. You know, everybody is totally blown away because the Dalai Lama, you know. And my whole thing is sick. Just one more sick ass person in this world as far as I'm concerned. I'm not shocked. I'm not blown away. It's just what it is. Sick ass people. Then you're talking about also what I said with the Catholic Church a long time ago, you're taking men and putting them in environments under the rules and guys that they're not allowed to have a wife, that they're not allowed to practice or pursue their sexual natural drive. And then you're putting small kids who they can control, manipulate and victimize in their presence. That's going to anybody, you know, I'm all for celibacy. I'm all for being, you know, uh, chast. You know, if that's your thing, I've gone through it. I, you know, since my breakup over a year, I haven't touched nobody. I haven't shook no hands, no shit like that. But the thing is, whenever that time comes for me where I'm ready to step back out there, I will pursue everything in an adult world. But 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 I'm not locked into an idea that I can never do it again. I'm self-imposing this. I'm choosing a path for myself based on where I want to be in my life and how much I value that type of encounter in this stage of my life. So that's me. But nobody is saying you can't. 
you, you don't like him. You can't ever do this. You can't. And then expecting me to move around and act like that's not in me. It's definitely in me. I'm just at a place in my life where it's got to be somebody that matters enough to me that I'm looking at the person that I think I can probably spend the rest of my life with before that ever happens. That's just me. But what I have a problem with, and, and I have a problem with a lot, and I've been telling you this, guys, we are putting our children in jeopardy. And I'm not just talking about it, our, the chance of our kid running into the Dalai Lama isn't that high. You know, most of our kids aren't Catholic. Now, we do have a large portion, you know, I, I you know, a large portion of us, uh, of the black community that is Catholic, especially from certain parts of the country. But most of us are going to be some form of Protestantism. But exposed to family members that can't be trusted, exposed to teachers and coaches that can't be trusted. We have an entire environment where we haven't insulated our children the way they should be. That's on us. We have not taken the threat against our children or the threat against their sanctity and their future and their ability to grow into what they were meant to be as well. This isn't just about somebody touching them. This is about ideals being pushed upon them before they're old enough to process all of the possibilities that come from this, uh, uh, making a choice in any of these ideas. And we're sitting idly by being casual in a time where we need to be aggressively pushing back. I have my stance on homosexuality. I have my stance on gender uh, preferences and all that. But I also tell you all the time, I love my family and I have people in my family who are part of the community and I love them without a shadow of a doubt and I will go to bat for them and die for them. And that will never change. So this isn't about me hating on them. This isn't none of that stuff. Uh, as a health, uh, mental health professional, uh, as somebody that deals with psychology, the idea of me being a phobe, meaning an irrational fear, of, is absolutely absurd. I don't fear anything, first and foremost. I don't hate anybody, first and foremost. But I have an absolute right to disagree with someone. I can disagree with you and I can still love you. That happens no matter what. That happens. So here I am. And I am going to say this and I'm going to be done. At some point, we got we to gotta stop. At some point, we're going to have to stand up. At some point, we're going to have to be the ones who do something about what's going on with our kids. We got to protect our children. We, if we love our kids, we have to protect them. If we love our kids, we can't keep saying the children of the future and then we are not providing the protection and the insulation and the guidance they need to make sure that they are effective and functional and powerful in their presence in the future. Absolutely unacceptable. The Dalai Lama is who the Dalai Lama is. Uh, giving somebody an assignment or a title does not change their humanity. It doesn't also, it doesn't all of a sudden uh, endow them with absolute purity and uh, everything. Everybody's fighting and struggling to be what they need to be in this world. Some people are sick. Some people have twisted mindset. And there's an entire population in the United States that are pushing for laws to make pedophilia legal. And we're sitting by. It's time to take action. On that note, I'm going to be out of here. As I said before I started this, we need your support. If ever we needed your support, we need your support now. Go to the description box, look in the description box, and choose a way to give. On that note, look, I'm going to check out of here. Uh, I need to unwind for a minute. I got a meeting with some guys. I'm sit down and try to unwind while we're doing that. Then I'm going to get back. I got some more work to do when I get back. But on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.